How's everybody doing, NG Conf? I'm excited to be back. Um, everybody had a great week? Yeah. Everybody excited it's over? That's when you can boo. Boo, like come on. You know, we're at the end, so I always like to call out folks who do great jobs. Why don't we give a quick round of applause for uh, Joe Aaron and Sonny's team and all the folks doing this. All right. And I got a phone up here, bonus, nice. I don't recognize that one. So uh, what we're gonna talk about in this particular session is kind of how to take your apps up to that next level. Now, I wanna start off with a question though. What are you typically focused on when you're building apps? And I'm sure most of the time you're thinking, well, you know, he probably means the things like the front end and the back end and a database and all this stuff up here and then you have CICD and you have cloud services and deployments that go with the CICD and the list goes on, right? But when's the last time you actually took the time to say, hey, what is the end user doing with my app and how could we take it up a notch? You know, how do, how do you think outside the box in other words? Well, that's what I'm gonna talk about. It's thinking outside the box, taking your line of business apps to the next level. Now, how many are building uh, line of business apps, typically internal here? I'm sure quite a few of you. Um, when we talk about line of business apps, um, you know, oftentimes I'm talking about those that actually drive your company's business. And I've talked to several people this week doing that. Um, the challenge though for us and especially our users is that as we use apps, our focus kind of gets split. And here's what I mean by that. Um, I don't know if anyone's done this, maybe it's just me, but I'm working in some app and I'm like, you know, I think I have a file or an email or something related to that. Maybe I'm going to Slack, I'm going to Teams. And I'm like, I know I have some information that relates to this. So then I go there, but then you go down that rabbit hole and like 20 minutes later, you come back up and you, you forgot what you were even looking for in the first place. Is that just me, hopefully? Um, that's kind of a challenge. It's context shifts, right? The data they needed wasn't available in the app. So they had to go look elsewhere. So we're going to talk about that. Uh, what about communication? A quick story on this. I recently had a little air conditioning issue. And I live in Arizona. Uh, it gets a little warm in the summer. So we had the AC company come out and literally the guy, I was up the ladder talking to him and he has a tablet in this hand and then a phone in this hand. But you know how you, you do this with your shoulder, right? And he's trying to enter stuff in the app to check for parts. And it made me realize, okay, there's a good opportunity for adding some communication so that he doesn't have to juggle all these devices and all that, and there's many other use cases there. Now, in addition to that, um, how many have to write up, you know, the most fun job of all, you have to write up documentation or docs for business plans, review them, uh, reports, all that type of stuff. Um, you know, all of this kind of tends to distract us and pull us away. So what if we could actually build some of this type of functionality into our app so that the user doesn't actually have to uh, go out and look somewhere else and then you know, be like Dan and can't find it. So if we break this down then, what if we could minimize context shifts and we're gonna talk about bringing in organizational data into the picture. Now, what do I mean by that? We'll talk about it more, but in a nutshell, your company has a robust like gold mine of data that we often don't tap into. Uh, there's files, there's emails, there's chats on and on and on, right? All this type of data that if the user could get that context, it might actually change their decision they're making. In addition to that, communication. Now, not every app needs this, but what if you, know, you need to send like an SMS message or email or maybe even make a phone call uh, directly from the app itself? And then finally, when it comes to uh, enhancing writing and reviewing, I mean, let's face it, nobody writes anything anymore. We just go to chat GPT, right? And you just let it do it for you. But uh, you could at least give them a starting point. And I'm gonna kind of demo that coming up here in just a moment. So these three categories, the one on the left is organizational data. 
Uh, the one in the middle would be communications, and the one on the right is going to be, we're going to talk about AI a little bit here. All right, so if we break those down, this is what we're going to do. So we're going to talk about how do we minimize context shifts and actually tie into this gold mine of data that most companies have. They just oftentimes don't realize it. How do we integrate communication capabilities? And how do we uh, do things like not only help them out with writing, but maybe even convert natural language to something else, whatever that is. So um, I went to MidJourney. Anyone use MidJourney in here for images? And I said, hey, I need something that represents a demo that has pipes and gauges and stuff. And this is what it made. I have no idea what that machine is, but uh, apparently, it's a very complex machine. I don't know. But let me uh, jump on over here. And so this is an Angular app. And uh, this is in a GitHub repo that at the end, I'll give you a, a nice uh, way to get to this. But the first thing is you're going to notice that I'm already logged in. Now, when I logged in in this case, um, I did approve that this app could go get certain types of data, such as it could pull my email my chats, okay, this could be from Slack, it could be from Teams or some other system if you have it. Um, so I've already done that mainly just to save the time because it's really fun to watch someone log in and see how bad they type. Um, so I, I decided I'll skip that. Now, if we move on down, you'll notice it's just the, the lovely data grid, right? It's uh, tabular data. We all tend to have this at one point or another, nothing fancy. Uh, you can sort, you can filter, uh, all those fun things. So not really a big deal, but that's what you can do. Now, when I click on things though, like, and I'm like super zoomed in here, so hopefully, well, you can't see the data, but you can see the buttons, which is what matters here. Um, this one is view related content. So imagine that you're working in a help desk app, uh, a tax app, uh, a customer app, and you know the list goes on and on and on where you know that the user probably has documents and emails and chats and uh, agenda items in their calendar because they've met with this customer, whoever it is. Well, what if we could you know, click on that and automatically have it pull in those documents? Now on this one, I don't actually have a, uh, a chat, but on others in a moment, I'll show you. Uh, here would be an example of emails, and then you can click on it to uh, go to it. And then here would be like, you know, maybe meetings, agenda items that you had uh, there. So that'd be an example of kind of what I mean. And we're going to look at that in just a moment. Now, the other one is uh, communications, right? So what if I could actually contact them directly right in the app? Or maybe I want to send an SMS email message. I can jump to here. We can type it in. And then I can go ahead and send that right from here, including SMS that type of functionality. Now, obviously, this type of stuff, not every app needs that. You know, that's, that's kind of a given. But there's a lot of apps, especially this AC app, where they would have benefited huge from having this built in. And then finally, um, we could even translate SQL or natural language to SQL. Now, there's a little gotcha on this one. We're going to talk about it. But uh, a little small here. I'm going to zoom this in just temporarily, or at least try to. There we go. Um, and you'll see that we're going to get the total revenue for all orders, group by company, and uh, include the city. Now, when I did that, it returned this. So we actually used AI to translate our natural language to SQL. Now, any DBAs in the room also? That you also do DBA? You've got to be going, eh. <laughs> like, I don't think so. So we're, we're going to talk about that more, especially since you two up front raised your hand. I'll, I'll look to you, and if I, if I see them like, I'll be like, yeah, don't do that. You know, and then if they're like, okay, that's good. Um, <laughs> so anyway, that's what we're going to look at. Now, there's another little AI piece I'm going to show you in a moment. Um, but we'll do that in just a second. Let me reset data here. Okay, and we're back. So let's move on. And let's talk about how did I bring in that organizational data? Like, what are the options there for uh, actually doing that? Now, everybody has different things, right, that they use. Uh, I happen to work at Microsoft, so I use Microsoft 365. I use Teams every day. But, you know, some of you, you're doing email, files, events from some other system. 
and that's fine. Most of these systems have APIs. So what I want to emphasize here is that while I'm going to show you the stuff I work with every day, the exact same concept would apply. You would just substitute in the different API calls um, here to make this uh, work. So as an example, you know, maybe you use Google uh, Workspace at work. Uh, maybe you use Microsoft 365. You might be on Slack. Uh, have lots of chat stuff going on, lots and lots of people on that. Or maybe like me, you're living Microsoft Teams because that's pretty much, I don't think I go a minute of my life without checking Teams uh, these days. So how would that look from a coding standpoint to actually integrate that type of data? Well, here's an example. Um, so, oh, first off, I'm gonna give a quick shout out. This app uses some environment variables. I don't know, Manfred, are you in the room at all by chance? Yeah, Manfred, good job on that package. If you haven't seen NGX Build Plus, it's great for getting environment variables into your uh, build process, super easy. So good job on that. But what I want to show you is this is how we could call Microsoft Graph. And so if you're using Microsoft 365, you're using Azure Active Directory. And you'll notice here I have this MSAL2 provider, and then this is the environment variable, thanks to what Manfred's done. It makes it easy to get to. But notice these scopes here. This is what the user would have to approve if they actually wanted to allow the app to get the user profile, get their presence. In other words, are they busy? Are they available? Uh, get their chats, their calendar, um, all that type of stuff. So the user has to obviously be logged in, but they also have to approve getting this type of info. Now, again, substitute your system here. I had to pick one, so I pick what I use. Now, moving on down, this is what it would look like to search for files. Now, the first thing in the kind of line 48 there, let me make this a little uh, higher up for the back row, because I care about you back row. Um, notice entity types drive item. This is actually going to search uh, in OneDrive for business. But again, if you're using Google Workspace with Google Drive, there's APIs to get to this but this is how you do it here. And then we're gonna pass in, in this case, it was the company name. But again, it could be anything. It could be a customer name, it could be a product. It really depends on what you're doing. Now, moving on down, this is actually where I call the API. See search slash query here, and then I post the uh, JSON object. And then I'm gonna loop through the results. It's basically like a search engine. And you get hits and, and uh, whoop, hit containers uh, down here. Now, you could do it that way. Um, that's actually the harder way. I wanted to show you that, yeah, it's just an API, but let me go to another one here. So I'm gonna go to the, uh, I want the files component HTML. So take a look at that code. MGT search results. All right, this is actually a brand new, this is a web component. So this works anywhere. Uh, but what this will do is you give it the entity types that you wanna search. I wanna search for files, that's called drive item. Give it the text you want to search for. And this isn't just like searching titles. It searches in the documents as well, of course. Uh, and then I want to know when the data changes. All right, so I hook just normal Angular binding to the data change. But what's cool is it's a web component. And that is actually what's driving, if I go back to here, click that. That's what's driving three out of the four of these is just using that simple web component to bring this in. Now I do customize the template a bit and stuff like that, but that would be what I mean by organizational data. All right, let's move on to the next one. Let's add communication features. Now, one of the more popular ones out there is Twilio. I don't know if anyone's using that or has, they have some great stuff. There's also Azure communication services. Now, regardless of what you're using, let me show you how we could actually use it. So. I'm gonna do the most dangerous demo I have ever done in my life. I'm actually gonna call my wife during the demo. Uh, we're gonna see how this goes. There are no promises this will work. <laughs> if, if it doesn't, I'm gonna say, yeah, she has horrible cell coverage, folks. You know? So you'll notice I go here, contact customer, call customer, this little pop-up. Now that is not her number. I, I did offer, hey, hon, I could like, put your number and you could know all these people. She didn't think that was a good idea, so uh, I'm not gonna do that. But let's see how this goes. We're gonna, we're gonna try it. 
And um, we, we tested this earlier. You couldn't hear the rings, but we could hear her if she answers. So here we go. Let's see if she answers. Hello. Hey, hon. How you doing? Oh, good. Um, are you supposed to be giving a talk right now? I am doing a talk right now. I missed you so much, though, you know. I... <laughs> hey. Uh, <laughs> Listen, I know you got safe. Right? <laughs> she she you knows know. I'm lying. <laughs> Don't let us down. What was that? I, I didn't hear you. What did you say? Don't let us down. Don't let us down. Okay, yeah. <laughs> Bye. Okay. So that's live calling in the app. Hey, it worked. I'm pretty happy about that. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Give my wife a round of applause. <clears throat> last night, I got, I got a segue. Sorry. Uh, last night, I told her, hey, I'm, I'm actually going to call you. Can you make sure you're available? And she goes, um, well, what am I supposed to say? And I said, well, I don't know, just make up something. And she's like, I gave her something. She goes, that's so stupid. So <laughs> anyway, all right. Now, what else could we do with this? Well, let's go to this screen, email SMS. Now, this is going to get us into AI, but before I, that's going to be next to wrap up. But remember earlier, I said, you could come in and type a subject and a body, send an email or uh, send an SMS message. But if you're a customer service rep or a help desk or whoever's using this type of system, it'd probably be really nice if we could help them out. So we're gonna, I'm going to save that uh, to the end because we're going to do AI now and kind of focus on that. So let me go ahead and uh, jump really quickly to the phone part because there's minimal code to do that, what I just showed there. Um, so we want to go to the phone call component. And... I'm, uh, you do have to get a token. I'm going to skip that part because tokens are normal these days. But let me jump down. And let's go to start call. So see this call agent start call? See this commented out code? That's her phone number right there. Yeah, I hard coded it. If, if, I, uh, if I scroll down, it won't be in the GitHub repo. <laughs> oh. Um, oh, I moused over it. <laughs> uh, uh, hey, Joe, we have editing on videos. We, we will edit that out. <laughs> I was wondering what you're all laughing about. Because I hard-coded at the very bottom of the file. Oh, man. Okay, nobody, all, you're all my closest friends. She's, she's here in town. Do not tell her if you see me. We're going to have to have a chat, Joe. <laughs> okay. Anyway, uh, that's how you call. And then the... <laughs> I'm going to be getting her a new number now. And this is how you hang up. Hey, who's ready for AI? Yeah. <laughs> wow. I promise you that was not planned. So, okay. Last little piece here. Uh, how many of you use like uh, Bard or ChatGPT? Anyone? All right. And John, uh, my good buddy John Papa, he had you know awesome talk yesterday on Copilot, uh, GitHub Chat, stuff like that. So you can do some amazing things. Um, there's a lot out there. There's a lot of open source, actually, LLMs out there. Uh, some of them are actually pretty decent. Um, but Google, of course, has some uh, great options. Uh, OpenAI, and that's, you can use OpenAI directly in this app if you want. That's in the README. Uh, we have uh, Azure OpenAI, and the difference between those is it adds more privacy and security um, than you'll get normally. So let me jump over to that part and let's go in and not do anything phone related. <laughs> and what I'm going to do here is say order is delayed, you know, four days. And I want to send the customer an email, but I, I want to help the person out here. So we'll test the network here too. So I'm going to go ahead and generate and hopefully it'll be fairly quick here. And what this is doing is making a call out to OpenAI right now. And there we go. So it actually gives a nice little message. It says, uh, we wanted to let you know there's been a delay in the shipment of your order. We apologize, blah, blah, blah. 
Now, of course, the user can customize it from here, right? Now, maybe because there's a delay, you know, I, I talked with uh, Joe and Aaron about this, and I know they're on board. Um, offer free ng-conf 2014 tickets. Oh, 2024, I'm... Uh, I know they're on board now. <laughs> they're going to be like, yeah, sure, go ahead, you know. It's all on YouTube. All right, down here somewhere, let's see what they said. As a token of our appreciation for your patience, uh, we would like to offer you free tickets to Angie Kauf, you know, worthless tickets. Um, <laughs> was that year one, Joe, 2014? That was the first year. Nice, nice. Now, what it did, though, is not only did it do that, but it also uh, generated what could be a, uh, uh, obviously, an SMS message. So to wrap up, what I want to show you real quick, oop, wrong way, is a little bit on the prompts here. What you'll learn with working a lot with the AI is that no matter how good your prompt rules are, and uh, I heard John mention, uh, you know, prompt engineering, for example, is going to be a big thing, because it is. Um, so let me go to OpenAI here. And I'm going to scroll on down, and we're going to go to right here. So I have uh, two ways you can call this. You can call OpenAI directly, or you can call Azure OpenAI, either way. Now, this code here is actually taking care of that. Notice I'm passing, let me move this for the back row. Notice I'm passing two ro uh, roles. One is how to act, that's the bot. And one is what the user wants the bot, if you will, to actually do. Okay, so the system is typically where you're going to put all your rules, but what you'll find is no matter how good your rules are, they don't always work 100% of the time because AI can be unpredictable sometimes. So it's, it's something to plan for. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to skip that. That's the natural SQL one. We'll talk about that. In fact, you see all these prohibited keywords I did? Because I'm protecting this for you DBAs because, you know. But I'm going to jump to this one. So notice this system prompt. Look what it starts with. Assistant is a bot designed to help users create email and SMS messages, return a JSON object. Now, there's a bunch more rules, like always be friendly. If I throw in you know, bad words and all that, it'll actually completely ignore them. Um, that it's very, very good at. But notice this JSON object, how many times I put it. And you'd think by that last statement, only return a JSON object. Do not include any text outside of the JSON object, just the JSON object is needed. <laughs> well, like 90% of the time, it will respect that, but occasionally you'll get back almost like a chat GPT type thing, response. Now, why do I bring that up? Because this is super cool stuff. I mean, you could do amazing stuff with this, but you always got to have some post-processing code you have to make sure that what it brings back is actually what you expected. And I won't bore you with the details here, but I'm looking for JSON. You might notice right above there, I give an example. And like I said, 90 or maybe a little higher percentage uh, time that works, but occasionally it embeds the JSON in a text like paragraph. So I literally had to break out my regex with, you know, Copilot um, and figure out how to extract that out. So that's one thing to keep in mind. Now, aside from that, though, all we do is call this little wrapper function I have. That calls up to OpenAI, uh, gives it the system prompt, the user prompt, and then that 0 0.5, that's the temperature. Uh, zero is like, be very strict, always do the same thing every time. And then as you get higher up to one and over, um, you can be very flexible, like poetic almost, if you wanted, which might be interesting for email. So, to wrap up, I hope this gives you an idea of what would be possible, but I also want you to realize that just because you can uh, doesn't mean you should. So like natural language to SQL, super powerful, but you better know what you're doing, you better have thought through security, you better have talked to your DBAs, um, because they're not gonna probably be happy if you just spring them on them. So very uh, cool stuff though that you can do and build in your app. So finally, Minimize context shifts, bring in organizational data. You all have Slack or Teams or something else, uh, files, emails, bring that in uh, as appropriate. Uh, add communication, just don't hard code your wife's phone number. Um, 
that might be bad. And then uh, obviously with AI, the, the sky's the limit. This is just a simple example. You could really take this up a notch. Um, and just remember, just because you can doesn't mean you should, so make sure you think it through really well uh, before you start doing some of this stuff. Uh, there's a full tutorial on this app, on building it, including a discussion of prompt engineering uh, and organizational data and all that. Uh, it's a little hard to see on here because it's the whole page. But if you scan that code there, you can get to that, plus all the links to the Azure stuff, the Twilio stuff, the non-Microsoft stuff, all that will be here. So with that, thanks everybody. Uh, I appreciate you uh, and putting up with me hard code my wife's phone number. So. <laughs>